let us move forward in the course and after learning about the nature of the inductor and capacitor let us come to uh, studying the circuits that employ them so we are going to start with very simple circuits a basic r l circuit which will have nothing except one r and one l and a basic rc circuit and there may or may not be a source in that so this is a very simplistic uh, circuit as far as uh, circuits go but uh, it's very important to develop concepts on simplistic circuits as i have already uh, often told you that whenever you want to develop a concept always resort to very simple circuits so that you can focus on the new concept being developed rather than uh, using a complicated circuit to learn something new that is not going to work so in, in a basic rl and rc circuit um, which are used quite often in electrical engineering circuits uh, in the amplifiers in the uh, feedback systems control system operational amplifiers and communica communication equipment so it's necessary to understand how how do they work in fact you should uh, pay very close attention to how these systems work because the assignment that is going to be based on uh, these rl and rc circuits is going to be a very interesting one where you are, you you would be required to show your understanding by explaining something that actually happens in the real world and you will you will um, and the solution of that thing is there but you are going to re-explain it in your own words later on once we are through with this chapter so let us come to a very basic rl circuit so we are going to consider two types of circuits one let us say uh, we can call them the source free circuits and the other forced or uh, circuit with source let us call them forced circuits so if we have an rl circuit we are going to have a resistor in the circuit and an inductor in the circuit for example for an rl circuit and nothing else so how is this circuit important is to see if we have some energy already stored in this inductor and suddenly say that energized inductor um, uh, came into uh, this configuration that it has some energy and an R is connected with it and nothing else, then this inductor definitely is going to uh, lose energy and this uh, resistor is going to dissipate that energy in the form of heat is uh, not recoverable back in this circuit again so the energy stored here is going to be dissipated through this r in some finite amount of time uh, in some time uh, actually mathematically it will take in finite time but for all practical purposes we are going to consider that it takes some a finite time to lose almost say 99.99 percent of of its energy so the inductor has some initial energy and that requires that it has an initial current so there was a current flowing in the inductor and that inductor current was i naught let us say it is i naught uh, signifying the initial current that was flowing through the inductor now suddenly when this r came into circuit this inductor came from some, some other circuit how it came to this form is not of our concern right now but suppose an inductor with a current I0 flowing through it is suddenly connected in this circuit. So this I0 will keep flowing through this R as well. So the current would flow like this. So let us say this current is I t, a function of time, because as inductor is going to lose energy, its initial energy W, let us call it W0, is, would be half L I0 square we already know this the inductor uh, energy at any point is determined by this formula half l and the current at that time 
squared. So initial energy would be this, but again, when this the same current I naught would be flowing here, some energy would be dissipated in here. How, how much would that be? We know the power associated with a resistor would be so the power associated with the resistor, let me write capital R here for resistor, would be equal to the current flowing through the resistor squared into the value of the resistance. So uh, using this, we can find the power and then if we integrate uh, that power from a time to another time, we can find how much energy that resistor dissipates. So as, this, as the energy dissipates uh, out of this resistor in the form of heat, energy is getting out of the system into the surrounding. So energy must decrease in this inductor. So this I must decrease. So this IT is a function of time. It will not be the same. This I naught will not keep on flowing here forever. That's not how it works. Because if there is an I flowing in a resistor, it loses energy. So therefore, if the energy is coming from here, so this guy is losing energy. This was the provider of the energy. This is losing energy and it, its energy will ultimately decrease. And by decreasing energy, we, we know that the inductor current must decrease as well because this is constant, inductance is constant, this can only change. So let us, uh, the, our objective is to find what this IT would be. The expression for this IT is what, what is our, our desire to find in this circuit. That is how this inductor is going to release its energy. And in a four circuit, for example, suppose we have an, a resistor and an inductor. And then there is a force, a forcing function, something that can force energy into this circuit. So let us say we have a source Vs that is suddenly plugged into this circuit with no initial energy or maybe some initial energy, but initially may, we may assume that it does not have any energy, then we know that because of the source, there will flow a current IT in this circuit. And although this will dissipate some energy, but some uh, this, this inductor, and by its very nature, we have discussed it earlier on, is going to resist sudden change in this current, but with time, it will stop resisting this change and it will act as a short circuit. So when this shorts out, the current value would be Vs over R because this will be shorted out and this uh, current would be Vs over R flowing in here. That would, the would be the maximum energy that this inductor can store. But it is not going to straight away start uh, with this Vs over R current. Initially it will be zero because the inductor initial uh, current was zero and it, it is not going to suddenly allow the change in current. So current will gradually increase. So again, here we are going to, uh, we are going to see how the IT in this circuit would be in this force circuit. This, this voltage source, the source that is providing the force is known as the forcing function. Here we don't have a forcing function. There would have been a forcing function that initially energized this inductor, but right now it is not here. We just want to see how the inductor loses energy in a simple RL circuit. And here we want to see how an inductor gains energy when there is a forcing function in the circuit as well. So in here, in this circuit, the, uh, the, the current, is definitely going to be dependent on how the circuit um, acts or, or the nature of the circuit. So the nature of the circuit is going to determine this, the nature of this current as well. So that is why uh, this uh, often this current that would flow in, in this circuit is known as natural response. Remember this word response means output, something that we are interested in. 
So here in this circuit, we are interested in finding IT. So our output is IT. So that is what the response means. So here, this we want to study how this circuit naturally behaves in releasing energy. So in here, we don't have anything else other than R, L, their, their values, obviously, how they are connected together. And it's the nature of the circuit that is going to determine what this IT would be. And this is what is known as the natural response of, of this circuit. And since this IT is going to be uh, be ultimately become zero because of this of the elements that that loses energy because uh, because any practical circuit in the world any inductor even is going to have some resistance of its own as well so it 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 loses energy with time and the behavior of losing energy will not continue forever but it will it will take some time and lose the energy and then ultimately there will be no energy left in the circuit so that, and that is why uh, the this this behavior that uh, initially the current or the output that we are interested in is uh, uh, is a different value and then with time it acquires a different value and the uh, and this and then it stays there so once this current becomes zero it's going to remain zero so become the, the becoming of the current from I naught to zero is one part, and then it, re, it, it remains zero if, if you look at, uh, look at it as a function of time. So if T is equal to zero is the time at which our interest has started with this circuit, and we are interested in finding how this current behaves, then we know that initially it was an I naught current that, is, that was flowing, it will take some time and then become zero or almost close to zero for all practical purposes. Then after that, it will remain zero. So it is, uh, there will be some time T, let us let us represent it with the capital T, T, okay, capital T for now. And after this time, for all practical purposes, the current will be zero. So in here, it is it, it is uh, it, it becomes zero here. It's not zero here. So how does uh, this behaves in between? Whether it's a straight line, it goes up, comes down. It goes down, becomes negative, you know, flowing in the opposite direction. Then goes up, comes here. Whatever the case is, it ultimately becomes zero. So this part of the Output is what we are interested in right now, and most uh, uh, very often this is also known as a transient response, as the name applies. It is a response that occurs for a very small time. For a, it's it's a, it's a the transient nature of this current basically that we are referring to here. So this is also known as transient response. And then there is another mathematical name for it because soon we are going to see that uh, when solving this circuit, we are going to encounter a um, linear differential equation. Let us come to that. So how can we apply KVL here? We have already seen that. In writing KVL for this circuit, we can write what will be the, so if we know this is the I flowing through the inductor, what will be the voltage across it? We, for KVL, we need voltages across components, elements. So we know the voltage across an inductor is L di by dt. And the voltage across a resistor is R into I equal to zero because there is only two elements in the mesh. So this is a differential equation because we have a derivative of that variable in here as well. So, and this is known as uh, homogeneous linear homogeneous linear differential equation and the mathematical community um, says that the solution to such a differential equation or probably we can write it as dIT by dt plus r over l i t equal to zero. So we have divided by l throughout. So the solution to such a differential equation 
with the derivative here and the constant, the coefficient of the derivative being one is something that is known as the complementary function. So you see there are many names. This response, the IT, is also called the natural response, is also called the transient response, and is also mathematically known as the complementary function. In this course, basically, in circuit analysis, we are uh, usually uh, most often be using this name, the natural response and the transient response. Transient is, response is the most um, appropriate name when we are interested in the time that uh, uh, time of the response that uh, we are interested in. There are generally two times that we are really uh, cared about. Uh, we really care about the time when the response varies and the time when the response remains steady. That is why this part, so while this part is known as the transient response, this part is known as the steady state response. So here, uh, the natural behavior of the circuit would be to create this transient current, but soon it will achieve a value and it will not change. And we are not actually forcing the circuit to have the steady response of zero current. But here in this circuit, this source is actually going to force a current through this inductor ultimately, and that final current would, uh, would stay there. So when this act as a short, the current flowing through this inductor, if we again plot, try to plot this behavior on this graph, initially we know it was zero, zero current. Then at some time, after some time T, capital T, it is going to achieve this value Vs, is a capital Vs over R. And after this time, it's going to achieve this value. It's not going to change. So how it changes from here to here is a straight line goes up, come down, or how it goes to this point is what we are going to learn in this course. But now here we have that steady state part. And here we have the transient part. Let us say the transient response and the steady state response. So here in this course, we are going to look at both types of circuits. The natural response of the source phase circuit and a circuit with the source in it. And once again, here we have several names as well. Now, because we have a forcing function, one of the names of the response is the forced response. So one of the names, this one. And then there is the steady state response. Maybe, but it's not very relevant here, I think. Uh, while the book refers uh, to as the steady state response, but uh, I do not agree with that. And then mathematically, actually this force response, the force response comprises of two responses, uh, the complementary function mathematically. So when looking from math's perspective, it will comprise of the complementary function. And then there is another uh, function, another uh, solution known as particular solution. And when we uh, look from the physics point of view, we say this force response is going to uh, include, obviously the nature of the circuit is relevant here as well. So we are going to have a part that describes the nature of the circuits or the na natural response. So there will be natural response, and then there will be a force response. Uh, sorry, uh, there will be a uh, steady state response. Steady state response should not be used here, actually. Mm, what should we call this? If by if, when the physics point of view is natural response and the force response, let us. It's actually quite, uh, quite 
confusing here that the force response comprises of a natural response and a force response is not actually too good but just to resolve these ambiguities of these variable uh, various names uh, from circuit analysis point of view the circuit analysis point of view we we say that the force response comprises of a transient response and then a steady state response so a part of the response would be transients that is as time proceeds time flows that this part is going to become zero it will vanish and this uh, part is going to uh, going to remain there in here the steady state response is zero all that we have is the transient response but in here we are going to have some natural response and some force response why because there is a forcing function so we have several names in here um, mathematically when we solve such type of equations how the differential equation will look in this case you can very easily see that for writing kvl we can write minus vs plus r i t plus l d i t y d t equal to zero so what do we get d i by d t plus r over l i t this is the same as this one but here we have we don't have equal to zero we have equal to v s so when we solve such an uh, equation the mathematicians say we are going to get a particular solution as well so the overall solution is actually comprises of a complementary function and a particular solution so we are going to um, stick with these names that when solving a such differential equation we are going to get a, a, a transient response and when solving such an expression we are going to get a, a transient part as well as a steady state part here the steady state part would be zero and that steady state part is going to uh, uh, going to be going to follow in a way or going to match how this forcing function is the nature of the forcing function is going to govern the steady state response so the nature of forcing function governs the steady state response and the nature of the circuit the component values the way they are connected together etc the nature of the circuit is what determines the uh, transient response or the natural response right so there are several names in literature you are going to find many names but we will try to stick to some simplistic names and uh, i will see if i can explain uh, the logic behind using different names with more clarity in in a future video